Today I'm going to show you how to get the greatest financing terms in the world. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the MLS Search and Analysis Show, folks. This is Holton Wise TV. I'm your boy, James Wise. I hope after you watch this show, you see the value we're providing and you stick around. And hell, maybe you'll want to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. If you want to do that, you'll send my team an email. Give us your number. We'll call you. And then you get your own video like my dude, Jeffro from Cali. What's up, baby? Jeffro, you got 100 bones for down payments, pre-approved for up to 400 k You love you some... Section 8 type investing, you love you some two to four unit deals. And brother, I got you a good deal right now. I think it's one of the best long-term investments. Why? Because of the financing. The financing is so great, dude. I am going to break down for you why the financing terms that you're going to be able to achieve on this property are better than anything else in the entire world. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. We're going to get into the meat and potatoes of this investment, right? And I freaking talk about why i think this is the best type of investment is this property for 19th center road bedford is this property specifically the greatest investment in the world not necessarily i think this property itself is a good investment but i'm talking wider terms here dude the four unit apartment building is in fact the best type of investment for long-term buy and hold investors right newer investors getting started my opinion it's literally the best investment you can make, guys, if you have the opportunity to take one down. Whether that's here in the Cleveland market through my company or in a different market, you would be best suited to take down a four unit whenever possible, okay? I think a four unit is better than a three unit, right? Four rent checks are better than three. But guess what, man? Here is the kicker. I also think a four unit is better than a five unit. What? 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 Ah! That doesn't make sense, James. You just fucking said a four is better than a three because four rent checks are better than three rent checks. That's true. So why isn't five rent checks better than four rent checks? Because of the fucking financing, guys. The financing is the fucking juice that keeps this fucking... I don't even know where I'm going with this metaphor, but that's the juice that keeps the freaking thing moving, dude. Why? Financing. Financing is why we all need to get into real estate investing, okay? There's a lot of ways to make money in this world. You could do a lot of things, right? You could sell stuff. You could cut hair. You could do tattoos. You could open up a restaurant. You could do a whole bunch of stuff providing people value and making money. But you know what you can't do? You can't do that stuff while somebody else pays for 75% of that. You can't do that other stuff while somebody gives you 30 years to pay them back. You can't do that stuff passively while working your day job while tenants pay off that 30-year loan. You can't do it with anything other than real estate, right? That's why real estate's the best, okay? And when you invest in real estate, you get to use residential financing, the premier type of financing. 30-year loans, fixed interest loans. You put down 25%, the bank puts down 75%. The interest is tax deductible. Best stuff ever. But here's the thing. That is only for residential financing. Residential financing is only going to be able to be used for a couple different types of properties. Single-family homes, duplexes, triplexes, quads, quads. Like this quad, priced at $199,995. Like this quad, okay? Once you get up to five units, you no longer get that beautiful 30-year financing. Now you got to get commercial financing. 
Okay? That ain't the name of the game. Commercial financing, for those of you out there who, uh, you know, haven't been involved with it, it ain't the same, dog. Myself, I got millions of dollars of loans out there uh, using financing of all sorts. Commercial, residential, seller financed, right? I've been through it all. I've sold over $200 million worth of stuff like this, so I know what I'm talking about, okay? Commercial financing is never going to be that beautiful 30-year term, right? No, no, no. You're looking at, like, 30-year amortization with a five-year call. And for those of you that don't know how amortization works, it's loaded with interest on the front end, okay? So, like, if you got a 30-year am, right, the first payment that you make is, like, 99% interest. You're paying off, like, a dollar in principal. And then the last payment, 360 months later, 30 years later, that's, like, 99% principal, 1% interest, okay? So it's all front-loaded, right? So you get these 30-year AM, five-year call terms. You got to refinance in five years, and all that money that you think you paid down on your principal, really, you're just paying interest, and then you're just refinancing, and you're starting back at the beginning. Not to mention, you don't just automatically get the sweet 25% down, right? It's based upon uh, the debt service coverage ratio of the building. Most lenders are looking for a dollar twenty per dollar lent out, but here's the thing. Once you're doing these smaller deals, right, like a five-unit deal, that's the worst type of investment there is, right? Because you, you're one unit too big to get that awesome residential financing, but now you're literally the smallest, crappiest commercial property for the commercial lender, so they don't really like it, right? Usually five-unit sellers are not super sophisticated. They're not keeping really great records. It's a lot of cash, right to pocket, don't tell the IRS kind of stuff, right? So that means the DSR, de uh, DS, debt service coverage ratio, DSCR, ah! the DSCR is going to be all jacked up, and you're probably going to pay like 50% down, okay? So the moral of the story, especially if you're a newer investor, dude, it sucks once you get up to that commercial financing, right? You want to stick with that residential financing, but you can't do it forever. You only get 10 of those, folks, 10 of those mortgages. And you better take care of that first mortgage on your own home. So now you only get nine for residential properties. So if you only get nine mortgages, do you want nine rental income checks? I don't think so. I mean, it would be okay, but you know what's better than 936, right? That, folks, is why quads are the best. And then this quad specifically... It's even cooler because this is a side-by-side -side quad, right? Boom, all four units all on one floor. And for those of you who do not already invest in real estate, let me tell you something. That is not a small deal. By the way, I'm just going through the pictures. You see all the jazz here, right? Being on one floor might not seem like a big deal to you, but I assure you it is. You might be like, oh, what? The tenants don't like walking up steps? Well, that's true. They usually don't. Ground floor apartments do typically rent faster and for more money than second floor apartments right think about carrying all your groceries in but that's not a big deal right that's like splitting hairs it's a minute difference the reason all four being on the ground floor are amazing is because ain't no motherfucker living above you ain't no motherfucker living below you right so what that does is that reduces a ton of the tenant issues we run into right anytime you got an up down property Ah, the guy above me he must be dancing on the floor. And then you got the guy above him, like, hitting the thing. Like, oh, the guy below me. People don't like it, all right? They argue. They argue. They get mad at each other. It causes people to move prematurely. We don't want people moving prematurely. We want to keep butts in our doors, right? So, for those reasons, the quad is the best investment for long-term investing. And if you can get a freaking side-by-side -side quad where all four units are on one floor, Holy moly, schmoly, boly, oly, oly, ol. It's amazing, right? So, with all that said, this one has been on the market for six days, and they're listed at one ninety nine ninety five. You got to pay more. I think you should offer two hundred five because there's going to be a lot of people bidding on this. There ain't no scenario where there's not multiple bidders here, right? Consider yourself lucky if you get to win this bid. You might even want to bid higher than 205. You should bid as much as you feel comfortable bidding. I think 205 would be a solid number. What are you going to get long term? You're going to get four tenants paying about 650, right? That's 2600 a month, 31,200 a year. That after fixed and variable expense estimates, almost 12 Gs a year. You only put down 51,000, as I said, bank kicks in 75%. 
The bank's going to kick in 153k, and them tenants, they're going to pay you. They're going to pay you back. You're going to make an 8.1% cash-on-cash return, and they're going to pay off your $153,000 note, right? That is amazing. One thing to note, the, the rents I gave you, though, those are market rents. Uh, this building is currently fully occupied. This is a clerical error here. This is a typo. We got a one bed, one bath. We don't have a one bed, 11 bath. That is also a one bath, right? So we got four one ones, and the rents they're getting are 595, 580, 699, 585. As you see, the market rents are 650 a unit, and that cuts both ways, okay? People might think, oh man, maybe he's fluffing these market rents, dude. Why are the market rents higher, right? If they could really get 650, why are they renting shit for 595, 580? Hey, man, I want you to pay attention. Cuts both ways. I cut it to you straight. This unit right here is renting for 699. If I was just fluffing you guys, I'd say market rents are 699 on all these, wouldn't I? No, it's not 650. I don't know why this one particular tenant is paying more than they should. But a reasonable expectation is six fifty for each of these units. Sometimes some landlords will end up with a tenant paying more, but it's a one-off. Maybe that tenant's got pets and they're paying pet fees. Maybe that tenant couldn't rent anywhere else and they uh, have like below uh, standards like background reports, right? Like this, they're when a landlord does their screening, right? These people are below their criteria. And this guy took a flyer on them. And to take a flyer on them, he charged them more rent. The moral of the story is when you buy a rental property. You ain't buying the tenants. You're buying the tenant base. You need to focus on what the property is going to do for the long term, right? These individual tenants, while it's great that they're all paying us money right now, they are fairly irrelevant to the long-term performance of your property because 25 years from now, ain't none of these people going to be there, right? But what's still going to be there is the tenant base. And what we're looking at with Bedford, solid neighborhood, man. It's like splitting hairs between a high C and a low B. Love this neighborhood. Love the property. Love the layout. Love the quads. Love the financing. 205 minimum is what you need to offer. And we got to do it quick because this thing's going to fly. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.